Okay, here's my little representation of the stock market, and we're going to turn this into a basic math problem that um, surprisingly, a lot of people who invest probably couldn't get this right. And I think that's kind of crazy, but here is the problem. So let's suppose the Dow Jones, you can use any index you want, S&P, uh, whatever the case is. Let's say it's at 30,000 and it drops down 50%. So it bottoms here at uh, 15,000. So that was a 50% drop. I think most of you can uh, uh, see that. Obviously, it's, you know, went down halfway. But my question is, uh, very quickly, you know, what percentage increase gain would you need on that 15,000 to recover back to your 30,000 right here? So what is that percentage increase? Now, um, you know, most of you are probably going to think about this for a second. Maybe a lot of you, hopefully a lot of you are going to uh, instantaneously know the answer to this. Okay, and if that's the case, that's very good. But uh, surprisingly, I think a lot of people don't understand uh, the risk of losing half of your money if you are invested. So I'm not going to turn this into a full investment uh, video. Certainly, I'm not here to give investment advice, but we are going to look at this as a basic percent problem. And I'm going to walk through this uh, step by step. So if you feel like you know the answer, that's excellent. And if you're invested and you're not sure you know the answer, well, then you want to stick around for a few minutes so you understand this stuff. And that's pretty easy uh, math. Again, uh, it's just an illustration of the things we uh, really need to understand when it comes to percent, which, of course, is everywhere. So we're going to get to this again in one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested uh, in my math help program and all my math courses, you can follow the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. Uh, most of those are test prep courses, but um, my main courses are pre-algebra. Um, algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here in a number of uh, just a few more weeks, just putting the final touches on that course. But to, again, if you're studying for a particular test like the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, maybe the uh, ASVAB, maybe the CLEP exam, uh, maybe the ACCUPLACER or ALEX or teacher certification exam, I can definitely help you out. So just go to my site, check out my full course catalog. If I don't, uh, if I don't have your exam, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, it can definitely help you out. And then obviously I help uh, those of you that are just struggling in your current math courses. Now, if uh, you get anything from this video and you're serious about wanting to learn math, then you got to be serious about this. That is note-taking. So many students uh, unfortunately neglect this, uh, like I did way back in the good old days. But um, if you want to be great at math, you got to take great math notes. It's the bottom line. I've been teaching math for decades, and this rule is just a constant of the universe. <laughs> okay, so those students who take great math notes always end up, uh, almost always end up with excellent grades. And then the reverse is true. Again, you know, if you don't uh, focus every day and take great math notes, you're, you're not going to cheat the system. You're going to end up with an average grade at best. Okay. Now, as you're approving your note taking, you still need that. Need uh, you still need something to study from? So you can use my notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, now uh, let's take a look at this situation. Now I'm an older guy, okay, over 50. <laughs> so I've been around, and I've uh, of course uh, have investments, and I have uh, along with us older folks. Um, you know, have seen stocks and uh, drops in the stock market uh, even worse than this. Okay, now of course anyone can read about history. So 50% drops is this uh, possible? Absolutely, it is possible. Now over the last decade or so, we haven't really experienced anything this uh, significant in the total in the big averages like the Dow Jones and S&P. Now individual stocks, absolutely, you could buy a particular company and it can you can crash. So you know, obviously, you need you need to understand uh, risk uh, when you're investing in anything. So let's take a look at this, right? So again, uh, we're at thirty thousand, and then in a matter of a month or two, something dramatic happens and stocks fall down. We're at fifteen thousand. Now we hope, okay, that we're going to recover back up to our thirty thousand. So let's just think about this right here, okay? So at 30000 okay, that's worth, uh, your portfolio is worth a certain amount of money, 
Okay. Now, if this drops 50%, well, what happened? Well, effectively, you lost half of your money. So we want to recover that money that we lost just to get back to break even. So that's the scenario. So right down here, when the Dow Jones is at 15,000, you're saying to yourself, okay, this guy's going to have to increase how much percent to get back to where I didn't lose any money. So that's the problem. And now let's take a look at the answer. And again, if you don't want to see the answer, pause the video and work on it here. But surprisingly, a lot of people um, answer this incorrectly. Okay, so uh, let's look at this from a mathematical standpoint. So 50% of 30,000 is obviously uh, 15,000. So, the, you know, uh, you could just, if you want to, you know, really be convinced of that, just go 0.5, turn this into a decimal, multiply by 30,000, and you'll get uh, 15,000, okay? Now, so this 30,000 obviously went down to 15,000. It's a 50% drop. So what's the situation? Well, where starting point is 15,000. So if I want to get back to 30,000, I'm going to need... Uh, to gain 15,000 uh, points on the um, on the Dow average to get back up to uh, 30,000. So the question is this: hmm, I need 15,000, so I don't need like 6,000 or 5,000 or 2,000 to get back up to where I want to go. I'm going to need 15,000. So what percent? We can form a question here: Is what percent is 15,000 of 15,000? Okay, <laughs> so. Like if I only needed, let's say I only needed 2,000 uh, points to go back up, all right? I would say, okay, what percent of uh, 15,000 is 2,000? But I need 15,000, okay, to get back to 30,000, all right? And my starting point is 15,000. So really, you need to think of this question this way. What percent is 15,000 of 15,000? Now, hopefully, uh, most of you out there do not need your calculator, if I'm saying right here, uh, here is a uh, 15,000, uh, uh, I don't know, milliliter cup or something like that, and it is completely full, okay? What percent uh, is it at? Well, it's at 100%. So what percent is 15,000 of 15,000? Well, it happens to be 100%, okay? But let's walk through this, uh, the mechanics of this here. So remember, when you take a percent of a number, what you do, let's take, uh, I'm gonna, you can see the math here, but let's take uh, 30% of, uh, let's say, 15,000, okay? So how do I uh, answer this? Well, I'm going to take that percent, I change it to a decimal, so that's 0 0.30, and then I multiply by 15,000, and I get my answer, okay? So I'm going to do the same thing here because I'm looking for percent. What percent? Well, let's take our X, let's make this X represent the percent that we're looking for. So we're gonna multiply by 15,000. So whatever percent of 15,000 is gonna equal 15,000. So what percent is 15,000 of uh, 15,000? Well, we can uh, construct a little basic equation like this. I know it's a little confusing because sometimes when it's that, s when things are this simple, uh, you know, you're kind of doubting yourself. Am I doing this correctly? Okay. Well, let's go ahead and uh, finish this. Now, remember X here is in a decimal um, form. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So let's solve for X. So I have X times 15,000 is equal to 15,000. So algebraically, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 15,000, right? To solve this little equation here, 15,000 X is equal to 15,000. I divide both sides of the equation by 15,000, just for those of you that need a basic, basic review and a basic, basic algebra. All right, so we get x is equal to 1. All right, so x is equal to 1, but what is that? Well, that is our answer. This is our answer as a decimal, okay? This is our answer as a decimal. So how do I change a decimal back into a percent? Well, we multiply by 100 or we scoot that uh, decimal point over two places to the right. So we'll take one, we'll multiply by 100, and we get 100%. Hmm, interesting, okay? So what does that mean? Well, that's the answer, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at it this way and uh, kind of really clarify this. Now, hopefully most of you understood this, and, uh, you know, uh, if you didn't, maybe you, you might be surprised. So if you're at 30,000 and it drops to 15,000, you lost uh, half your money, okay? It was a 50% drop, 
okay, in that investment. But you're going to need a 100% gain. You're going to need to double your money to get back to break even. So uh, I would say I would probably 50% of the people out here initially said, oh, it dropped 50%. Now, don't be, uh, you know, you got to admit it. Only you will know if you answer this. Uh, I would say a, a ton of people said, oh, well, then you have to go back up 50% to get back to break even. And no, that is wrong. That is like, wait, wait a minute. You're talking about if I go up 50%, if you go up 50%, that's only halfway through uh, 15,000. 50% 50 of 15,000 is what? 7,500, right? So you take that 7,500 and add it on to this. You're not at 30,000. So when it comes to investing, uh, you know, you're going to have to be super, uh, you know, lucky. I don't want to say lucky, but you're going to have to really um, hope for incredible gains to double your money over a period of time. You know, this is pretty, pretty <laughs> challenging to do in any investment. But can investments uh, drop by 50%? Uh, Absolutely, like Dow Jones and things like that. Uh, but they also can go up, and they can go up thousands of percent as well. So, of course, you're going to have to figure out what you want to do in terms of investing. But you need to know uh, the basic risk involved, at least from uh, an easy uh, percentage, um, you know, kind of way of looking at things. So, you know, um, again, the reason why I've uh, made this video is because, you know, when I read different things, I'm I'm a big reader, and I also invest, etc. But, um this this little point is always emphasized. I'm thinking, yeah, you know what? There's probably a lot of people out there that would initially say, oh, it goes down 50%. So it's like a roller coaster. Oh, I just need to go back up 50%. Well, no, it doesn't work that way. So hopefully this uh, little video was enlightening. And enlightening, I got to say that word correctly. And if that's the case, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And uh, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, I've been on uh, YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand videos all there for you. My mission, my goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way, okay? In a way that anyone can get it. Uh, nobody should be failing math these days, okay? If you're doing your part, you got you can take responsibility, which means you're taking, uh, you know, great notes, you're talking to your math teacher, you're, you're really working at trying to learn the subject, Above and beyond that, there's a lot of resources out there. So if you like my teaching style, please uh, watch my videos on my channel. That's what they're there for. And, of course, I'm creating new content all the time. But my best math work will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your investing and in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.